Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Good morning. Buenos dias. Amen. Anin Boju. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Stand to your feet with me. Come on, one more time. Praise God. You know me. You know what we like to do. Praise God. Just, just before we get into the Word of God. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Come on, lift, begin to lift up your voices one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, begin to praise him and thank him and bless him and love him and adore him. Hallelujah. Let the angelic host know that you're alive and well. Let the 24 elders know. Hallelujah. Let the saints in heaven that have gone before us uh, that we're alive and well because of the blood of Jesus, uh, because of the Holy Spirit, because of the word of God, we're alive and well. Come on, church. Uh, praise him and bless him and thank him and love him and adore him. Oh, Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Father God, we praise you and bless you and thank you, love you and adore you today. This is your service, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everyone who made it out, who made a special effort to make it out due to the snow, oh God. Now, Lord, as we look to you, thank you, Lord, for what you've done. What you're going to do, oh God. Lord, tonight and today as we come, in the name of Jesus, we come before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Hallelujah. Lord, you said you're able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, oh God. That faith, amen, that the just live by faith. And Father God, as we hear your word. May we hear it in faith. May we believe it in faith. And may we begin to apply it. Amen. By faith, O oh God, anoint your people to hear and see and anoint these lips of clay one more time. And the church said, Amen. if you have your Bibles, turn with me. Numbers 27. How I came to, I'm going to talk about three different examples of three different examples of those who needed their inheritance. We need our inheritance. I rebuke the spirit of poverty in the name of Jesus. We need our spiritual inheritance. Hallelujah. And as we look at this word, I want to tell you how I come about this word. See, I just came back from Texas and Mexico. Went down to Mexico knowing that I needed some work on my teeth. I was told here I needed three crowns. When I get down to Mexico and they look at me and work me over in the dentist chair for three and a half hours, gave me Novocaine here, there, everywhere. I thought I was getting high on Novocaine. I had so many shots. Come on, church. And then they tell me, hallelujah, you're going to need 13 crowns. Amen. And it's going to be a little, about, oh, little over $2,400. See, crowns here are about 2000 here in the States. They're 200 down there. Amen. And so I begin, come on, church. I, I, didn't, I, I had enough just for three crowns. Never mind the rest of them. Hallelujah. Amen. And right away the enemy says this and says that. And the Holy Spirit began to remind me of one thing I've taken with me all these 40 years of ministry. How are you going to get me out of this one, Lord? Come on. And I begin to laugh at the enemy. Why? Because God has always made a way, even when there seems not to be a way. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In Numbers 27. So this is how I come by this word. Verse 1. Then came the daughters of Zophalad, the son of Hefner, the son of Gilad, the son of Meher. The son of Manasseh, boy, he was the son of everybody. From the families of, of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And these were the name of his daughters. This man had four, five daughters. Malaya, Noah, Hola, 
Milcha and Tizra. And they stood before Moses, before Eleazar the priest, and before the leaders of all the congregation. Say all the congregation. By the doorway of the tabernacle of the meeting, saying, Our father died in the wilderness, but he was not in the company of those who gathered against the Lord, in the company with Korah. But he died in his own sin and had no sons. Why should the name of our father be removed from among his family? Because he had no son. Give us a possession among our father's brothers. Come on, church. I begin to look at this portion of scripture. Hallelujah. These five daughters, these five daughters were something. Amen. They were going to defy Israel's male dominant tradition and repro and approach Moses to grant them the full petition of their father's inheritance. Their father had no sons, amen. And since women were considered unworthy, they were considered unworthy. Come on, ladies, you should be saying something, amen. These women were considered unworthy. Amen. Of anything, of any kind of inheritance, that it would be distributed. Amen. That they would get anything, but it would go to their their relatives. Amen. And they were left, they were left destitute. But something began when you think about these ladies. They would go before Moses, they would go before the priest. And they would go before the elders of the congregation of the people of God. Come on, church. I wonder if the great Dr. Martin Luther King was reading this portion of scripture. When he was raised up to be a preacher of the gospel and tra change law. And change the laws, hallelujah. Laws were changed because of Dr. King, hallelujah. Come on, he could have sit there idly by. He could have said, you know, I'm not going to do anything. But he knew he was raised up and called to make a change. These five women were, were raised up. They were raised up to make a change. To make things different. Because what they would do... Would not only... Would they inherit an inheritance... But those other women who would follow them would come after them. Maybe their daughters or granddaughters or great-granddaughters. Hallelujah. Things could be different. They wouldn't have to be destitute and considered unworthy. Come on, church. I want you to think about what, it, what happened. They could have they just sat there idly by. They could have just said, well, that's the way it is. That's where I'm worthy. We're destitute. This is just our lot in life. I'm a victim. Pull out the victim card. I'm a victim of my circumstance. I'm a victim, a man, a man of my family. I'm a victim of my tribe. I'm a victim. I'm a victim of being unworthy and destitute. Come on, church. How many, how many, how many today are in this house that you're just simply saying you're a victim? You're an unworthy and you're destitute. You're in spiritual poverty. And guess what? Some people have accepted that lie from the devil. That's a lie. Come on, church. These five women could have just said, amen. They could have just let that lie fester in their mind, be lodged in their heart. The thief comes not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come, Jesus said, that they might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. The devil goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. These five women, the enemy would have liked to devour them with the thought of, of unworthiness, of destitute. They could have just parked there, but stay with me. Amen. 
And I want to ask you today, where did they get this? What was it? It was like, it was, oh, Shandaramaka. It was like, it was like, hey, I feel, I feel something stirring in my soul. Hallelujah. I feel a moving. I feel a shaking. I feel a stirring down in my soul. Hallelujah. I feel faith coming alive. I see unbelief and doubt moving away from me. Something's happening. Something's happening. Something's happening. A change is happening. Victory is happening. Rejoicing is happening. Joy is happening. Praise is happening. I feel a change. Come on. See, they were going to take a risk. They were taking a risk. Because they were there the shandor on my sheet. You see, they could have said, you know, if we go before Moses, before the priest, before the elders of the congregation, what if we're rejected? What if they reject us? Come on. What if they just cast us aside? What if they just mock at us and just say, hey, yeah, you ain't getting nothing. Come on, church. But there was something, like I said, something just, uh, something stirring in them. Something moving on them. Faith was coming down. Miracles were coming down. Belief was coming down. Down. Unbelief was fleeing. Fleeing. And something was happening inside these five women. These five women, oh man, there was something going on. They said, hey, you know, we can sit here. We can play the victim mentality. But guess what, sisters? Guess what, sisters? Guess what, sisters? Let's go. Hallelujah. I believe God is inspiring us. is stirring us to go. To go. To believe. To ask. God wants us to ask. You have not because you ask not. Call unto me and I will show you great marvelous things which you know not. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you'll find. Knock and it shall be opened. For everyone that asketh me deceiveth. He that seeketh findeth. To him that knocketh it shall be opened. For what man is there among you whom if his son has bread will you give him a stone? If he has a fish will you give him a serpent? If he then be an evil. Know how to give good things unto them which ask you. How much more shall your heavenly father, heavenly father, come on, heavenly father, give good things to them that ask him. Hallelujah. There was the spirit of asking coming on these women. Come on. And they took a risk. Come on, church. They took a risk, amen, because they're asking for an inheritance that only sons got. They're remarkable because they're questioning. They dare, they're remarkable because these women dare to question the logic of Israel's laws. See, this was law. This is the way it's always been, the same old, same old. But they begin to question Israel's laws. They're revolutionary. Come on. The word revolutionary means one misdefinition is constituting to bring about a major or fundamental change. Come on. You see these women, hallelujah. There's new problems. We got new problems all the time. But they give us opportunity to seek God's wisdom and learn new truths about the new problems because there will no longer be new problems. There will be old problems when the truth of God's word, the truth of the Holy Ghost come on the scene. Hallelujah. They could have been, listen to this. I figured, I found this, I figured you'd like it for this situation. See, there are those who make an excuses. You know, the Lord told them, go in and take the land. You're going to conquer the Jebusite, the Hittite. Amen. All these heights, the Gergesite. Come on. And you're going to have to conquer the Yabadite. 
Come on. See, that's my own definition. Yeah, but that. God tells you something. They could have said, yeah, but Lord. Yeah, but Lord. Yeah, but Lord, we're just women. Yeah, but Lord, hallelujah. Yeah, but Lord, what's a, that? Yeah, but they had to address. Yeah, but Lord. Yeah, but Lord. There is no yeah, but Lord in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. There is no yeah, but Lord. Come on. They could have said this. Dear God, please write the knots that are in my mind, in my heart, and in my life. Remove the have-nots, the can-nots, and the do-nots that I have in my mind. Erase the will-nots, the may-nots, the might-nots that might find a home in my heart. Release from me the could-nots, from the would-nots, from the should-nots that obstruct my life. I ask you to remove from my mind and my heart, my life, all the am nots that I may have, that I may not hold, hold, that may not hold me back, especially the thought that I'm not good enough. Come on. See, there was something in these women. The scripture says this, verse 5. He brought before them these women that just, they, they, they encouraged me. Maybe they were thinking, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. Amen. Amen. And forget not all his benefits. His benefits, his benefits who redeems thy life from destruction, who crowns thee with loving kindness, who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles, who heals all thy diseases, who crowns thee with, crowns thee. He crowns us. He crowns us as kings and queens in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Come on. Where did they get that? Where was it that they, they, they had a different perspective than everybody else? These women weren't just taking everything, just taking everything in, letting, uh, letting doubt and unbelief large and lodge in their heart and in their mind. But they begin to be of the mind of Caleb. They begin to think about Caleb. They begin to think about Joshua. They begin, oh, Shandaramashi. They begin to think, hey, hey, didn't, didn't Caleb say, Lord, that mountain, I've been walking around here in this wilderness for 40 years with these people. I believe that mountain can be mine. Was it not the Lord that gave Caleb that mountain? Hallelujah. And when they heard that and seen that, they said, hey, if, Paul, if Caleb can get a mountain, I can get something also. If I ask, Caleb asked for the mountain, God gave it to him. What are you asking the Lord to do for you today? What are you asking for? That looks so big, looks so impossible. But nothing's impossible for the Lord. Come on, give him a clap offering. It says here, what did Moses do? Moses brought their case before the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, saying the daughters of Zophar, speak what is right. You shall give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brothers. And cause the inheritance of their father to pass to them. And you shall speak to the children of Israel, saying, if a man dies, has no son, then you shall cause his inheritance to pass to his daughter. If he has no daughter, then you shall give his inheritance to his brothers. If he has no brothers, then you shall give his inheritance to his father's brothers. And if his father has no brothers, then you shall give his inheritance to the relatives closer, closer to him and his family. And he shall possess it. And it shall be to the children of Israel a statue of judgment, just as the Lord commanded. They got their possession, and they changed the law. God changed the law because they asked. Come on. God changed the law. Everything was changed. Hallelujah. Come on, church. 
scripture, tell, turns with me quickly over to Joshua chapter 15. Joshua chapter 15. Verse 18 and 19. See, this thing was contagious. Faith is contagious. Just like doubt and unbelief is contagious. If you want to fly with eagles, hang out with eagles. If you want to be a vulture, hang around with vultures. If you want to be a chicken, hang around with chickens. Come on. But if you want to be with eagles and soar, you're going to have to hang around with eagles. Come on. Some of the people back in the day, we thought we were eagles. Mm. Come on. We didn't know they were crows. Come on. If you want to sing like a canary, hang out with canaries. Hallelujah. Come on. This was contagious. God gave Joshua Caleb the mountain down in verse 18. And something began to happen to his daughter. See, there was a stirring. There was a moving. There was a belief. There was a faith. There was a trust. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him. He shall bring it to pass. There was a trust. There was a faith. There was a hope. There was a belief. There was a stirring. There was a moving upon his daughter. Something was, something was passed on. Something was carried over to his daughter. They weren't just going to go. They, were, they, they knew that they needed the full inheritance. That they had an inheritance coming in verse 18. Now it was so when she came to him, this is his daughter, that she persuaded him to ask her father for a field. I need a field. I need a plot of land. Hallelujah. Come on. So I can grow cucumbers, jalapenos, tomatoes, onions, lettuce. I need a field. Hallelujah. Come on. I need a field because I'm a gardener. I like to eat healthy things. Hallelujah. I don't like to eat always fried chicken, hallelujah, and greasy fries and everything of grease, although it tastes so good. Come on, church. Man, that greasy chicken just tastes so good. It'll run down your, run down your hand, down your lips. But it ain't good for us all the time. Come on, can I get a man, get an ouch or whatever? So she persuaded him to ask. So she dismounted from her donkey. And Caleb said to her, what do you wish? It's kind of like the Lord saying to us, what do you wish? Come on, as he came to Solomon, what is it? What do you wish? And I hear the spirit of God saying to us, what do you wish? What is it? What is it in your asking that you'll ask for that will honor me? That will bring glory to me? Not only a man, as our brother said, so that I might have more to give to the work of the Lord. So I might have more to keep the doors open and be a blessing to someone else. To put a care box or a turkey or a ham around the holidays into their lap. Just to let them know that God loves them. God hasn't forgotten about them and we love them. Come on. What do you wish? He gave him the land. 19, she answered, give me a blessing. Give me a blessing. Since you have given me the land in the south. I got the land in the south. But I need more than the land. Come on. Shandara Bokuti. How many of us stop right there? You stop right there and you get all excited. Hallelujah. But you stop right there. When God wants to, hey, I want to give you a triple portion. 
I gave you one portion, the land, but I want to give you a triple portion. See, sometimes our faith stops there. But she knew that if I'm going to grow something, I need water. What good is an old piece of ground that's just dusty and hard and clayed over if it ain't got no water to grow in? Come on. Come on, church. Come on. And her, her, her faith, her, her trust didn't stop there. Mm. I'm on a, oh, oh, woo, I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. I mean, God's moving. Why am I going to stop here? If God's moving, I'm not going to stop asking. If God's blessing, I'm going to receive not one blessing, but I'm going to get a triple blessing. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Give him a clap offering. You have given me the land in the south. Give me also springs of water. So he gave her the upper springs. That's the second portion. And the lower springs. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Man, she got the land and an upper and lower springs. A triple blessing. Come on. An inheritance. Paul said this in Acts 10, 20, 32. So now, brethren, I commend you to God in the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Come on. Colossians 1, 12 says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life. Hebrews 11, 8 says, By faith Abraham, when he obeyed, when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. Come on. He went out by faith and God gave him an inheritance. God said, Hey, you need encouragement. Go, come on out here. Come out out from your tent. Look at the sand by the seashore. Can you count them? So shall your descendants be. Come on. He went on a little bit and still didn't get Isaac yet. Still was a man battling with receiving. God said, come here. Come on out here. I want to talk to you. Did you tell, didn't I tell you about the sand? Now look up. Count the stars. Count the stars if you can. So shall your descendants be like the stars in the sky. Oh, you see, God was trying to, God was trying to move him. Move him. Move him in faith. Move him in trust. Move him in hope. Move him to victory that, hey, it's going to come. I'm getting older. She's getting older, but it don't matter. It's just going to bring more glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me be 100. Let me be 110, 120. It ain't going to matter. Hallelujah. Because nothing's impossible with God. Hallelujah. Nothing's impossible for the Lord. Come on, church. And we need times of encouragement. Come on. Come on. Got that. Come on. Turn with me quickly over to the book of Job. Book of Job 42. So I find myself laughing today. I had to be reminded by the Holy Spirit. I can't wait till God, how I see God's going to get me out of this place. When they said it's going to cost you $2,400 and uh, a little bit more, I said, go ahead and go to work. Because somehow God's going to make a way. I don't know how it's going to happen. But I'm his servant. He's going to make a way. Come on, church. God's going to make a way. Hallelujah. And I'm going to come back and testify and say, hey, hey, remember? This is how the Lord made a way. Hallelujah. 
said, it might come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. But God's going to make a way. In Job, amen. In Job chapter 42. Verse 12. Now the Lord had blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. Isn't that a good place to underline? Isn't that a good place to pray? Isn't that a good place to say, God, let me have that. Bless my latter days more than my beginning days, Lord. Man, let me be used more by you. May more souls get saved. More, more people get delivered than ever I've seen in all my life in the beginning, Lord. More lives be touched for you, Lord. It's a good place to pray. Bless the latter days of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen. You ever see an ox? 1,000 of them big boys. Man. Come on. Wow. Be nice to have a big ox here and have a barbecue here. The more we feed the church, feed everybody, and go home with the with the some something for the next couple of days. Hallelujah! Woo! One thousand female donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. And he called the first Jemima, the second Kiza, the name of the third Kareen Hapak. In all the land, there were found no women so beautiful as the daughters of Job. Wow. Just kind of like my granddaughter over here. Young man sitting next to him. Her. Hey, I got my eye on you. better watch out. I've been known to pick young men up and put them between the heavens and the earth. Come on. Watch your P's and Q's. Come on. I say that in love. Amen. And my granddaughter better watch out too. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Come on, church. Because sometimes these young people, the horn, come on. Never mind young people, their hormones getting out of order. Some of the adults, their hormones get out of order. Come on. We need to ask the Holy Ghost for self-control. Self-control, self-control. Don't tell me this, don't tell me that. Self-control, hallelujah, in the Holy Ghost. Self-control. Never mind the sports illustrated issue. Never mind. You're close to pornography as anything. They're getting skimpier and skimpier and skimpier. Come on. Never mind Victoria's Secret. Get your, get your sports illustrated. That's bad. Come on. It gets in the eyes. It gets in the mind. It goes to the heart. Come on. It goes to the heart. Amen. Come on. The trap is the trap is set. I'm looking for somebody to make me a giant mouse trap. I was going to bring a little cup, a little mouse trap. You know how it snaps. Then you got them sticky things. Hallelujah. Right? Then you get bigger like this, you get a rat trap. You know that thing is about, that thing's about that thing that breaks about that thick. It's going to get a mouse trap, a rat trap. Then I wanted to get a homemade big mouse trap. Come on. And then they'll just find a mannequin there. And demonstrate to you and put him out there and snap it on the mannequin. You've been trapped. Come on. Come on, church. 
People never forget things they see with their eyes. The enemy would like to trap us, trap you, trap you, trap you in the sin and destruction. Come on. Come on. It says here, I'm coming in. And their father gave them an inheritance among their brethren. Their father gave these, his daughters an inheritance. See, the father's love. Oh, man. These are examples of what our heavenly father's love is like. They were all fathers. Come on. Caleb was a father. Job was a father. Zeo, he was a father. Come on. And he wasn't going to leave his daughter's house, but they were going to receive an inheritance. And God wants to give you an inheritance. Job granted them an inheritance along with his brothers. This was unheard of in ancient times. It was unheard of. You hear me, church? Job, if Job is a picture of Jesus Christ, he wants to empower all his children with the same resources and opportunities with a full inheritance. Come on, you hear that? He wants to empower. Empower. It's God who empowers us to get wealth. Come on. That's the word. He wants to empower all his children with the same resources and opportunities with a full inheritance. Come on. You're not unworthy. You may be destitute right now. Oh, but stay in the Lord. Hallelujah. Stay in the Lord. Things are about to change. Hallelujah. Come on. Things are about to change. Hallelujah. Hear me, church. Things are about to change. Things are about to change. Things are about to change. Your situation's going to change. Your family's going to change. Your children going to change. Your grandchildren going to change. Your finances are going to change. Your health is going to change. Hallelujah. It's going to community's going to change. Hallelujah. There is a change. Change a change. A change coming. A change coming to our circumstance, to our life. There's a change coming. Change. God just, just, God just, he just does it. A change. A change. Come on. A change. You hear me, church? A change. A change. A change. There's a stirring. There's a moving. I'm telling you, there's a moving. There's a stirring. A stirring. Something's leaving. And goodness is coming in. Faith is coming in. The enemy is leaving. Goodness is coming in. Mercy is coming in. Come on. The word is coming in. You believe it. You claim it. The promises of God are yea and amen to them that believe. They're not nay, but they're yea and amen to them that believe. Come on, church. You got to go after it. Are you ready to ask? Are you ready to ask? Caleb said, what do you wish me to do? What do I wish you to do, Lord? See, my, my list ain't that big. My list only includes two things. It's not money. 
not a bigger house or a new car. But my wish is for my son Daniel to come back. He's doing 40 years without parole. My wish is that he'd get out early and live for the Lord. That's what I'm asking. My second wish is for my oldest grandson to come back. That's my list. My family. My family. And I'm going to join you and me. And let us ask the Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Stand to your feet if that's you. If you're there, I want you to come. You're not just coming to an altar. You're coming to the Lord. The altar is a symbol of what it's like in heaven. Where we come before his mercy seat. Where the cherubim are upon the mercy seat and the blood's been sprinkled upon that mercy seat. Come on, come on, squeeze in here, squeeze in here. Father God, come on church, come on, lift up your hands, lift up your hands and receive from the Lord. Come on, come on, begin to pray. Come on, begin to help me. I need you to help me pray in faith. Hallelujah. Lord, we come against unbelief. We rebuke doubt. We cast it out in Jesus' name. We can we come against the cannots in Jesus' name, the would nots, the have nots, the do nots. We come before all, we cast them all out. And Lord, we pray today. Lord, as I stretch my hand this way. Come on, church. Begin to ask him. Lord, I begin to ask for my son, Daniel. One more to come in, Lord. I ask for my grandson, Tony, Lord. Bring him back, Lord. Bring him back. Give him hope. Let them know you love them. That you care about them. That you're your heavenly father, God. Hallelujah. Bring them back in, Lord. Father God, I pray for everyone here, whatever it is they need, Lord. Just like Caleb said, what do you want? What do you wish me to do? Come on, church. Begin to ask him. Begin to open your mouth. Ask the Lord. His eyes are in every place. They behold the evil and the good. Ask him. Maybe you're struggling with addiction and maybe your prayer is simply, Lord, I don't want to use anymore. Help me, Lord. Break the addiction. Break the bondage. I don't want to use anymore, Lord. Help me to stay clean. Help me to stay sober through the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Today is the beginning. Clean me up. Deliver me, Lord. Father God, I stretch my hand. Somebody's battling with colon cancer, with prostate cancer. I curse that cancer today in Jesus' name. Heal, heal. There are people here, Lord, who need a healing. Heal them, Lord. Touch them. There are people, Lord, their mind isn't right. Touch their mind. Touch their thinking. We have the mind of Christ. Give them the mind of Christ. That mind. Thinking, Lord. There are mothers here, Lord, who are broken hearted. Lord, is nigh unto those that are of a broken heart. Save such as be of a contrite spirit. Lord, heal the broken hearted. Maybe their men are here broken hearted. Touch them, Lord. Heal them, Lord. Heal the broken hearted. Deliver the downcast and rise them up, O oh God. Let them shanda da bakuri andara mamashita. Move, Holy Ghost. Move upon your people. Move upon your people. Stir them, Holy Spirit. Stir them up. Stir up faith, O oh God. Stir up the embers in their inner man, inner woman. Stir them up, Holy Spirit. Move upon them. Stir them up. Stir them up. And may everything that's not of you be burnt up. As they're being stirred up, it be burnt up in the flames of the Holy Ghost. Set them on fire, Lord. 
Stir them. Give them zeal. Give them zeal, Lord. Some have lost their first love. Bring them back. Bring them back. May they repent. May there be repentance at this altar, Lord. May we repent. If we confess our sin, you're faithful and just to forgive us. Cleanse us. Cleanse us. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Cleanse our heart. Cleanse our mind. Cleanse our mouth. Cleanse our body. And wash it clean. In the name of Jesus, we receive today. We receive today. Oh, Shandarama Kondarama Mashita. Some of you are going to be, oh, oh, there's something here happening. Come on, church, pray through. Something's happening. Something's being, there's something happening at this altar. Something's happening at this altar. Something's happening. The Holy Spirit's moving. Some are going on to higher education. Some of you are going to get your diploma. Some of you are going to go to college. Hallelujah. Some of you are going to do things you never thought you could do. It's going to be the Lord helping you, strengthening you, because you have the mind of Christ. There's no limit. No limit. Oh, Ramamashita. Oh, Come on, church. Come on. I see in the spirit somebody's coming home. I see a son coming home. I see a daughter coming back home. I see a granddaughter coming back home. They're beat up. They're lonely. They're hungry. They're thirsty. Love them. Love them. Love them. Welcome them back home. Because they're, they're coming back home. Father God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. I know I'm going to get that call. That visitation when I see my son. I know my son's going to say, I came back home. I'm right with God. I know my grandson's coming back. Hallelujah. Oh, let this be an altar of repentance, Lord. This is where TJ found the Lord. You were never lost, Lord, but this is where TJ made his dedication. My youngest son, hallelujah. Do it again, Lord. Do it again. Do it again. Do it over and over and over and over and over again. Lift your hand this way, everyone. Whether you're at this altar or in this house, I want to ask God to bless you. Lord, bless thee and keep thee. Lord, make his face shine upon thee and be gracious to thee. Lord, lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Lord, put his name on you and bless you with shalom. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed. God bless you. Hallelujah. Give him praise.